five things that Tim Hyde is really keeping an eye on, looking for in this blue gold game, Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, everyone's favorite streaming service, Peacock. That's how you're going to watch it. And then after the game, Tim and I will be live for, uh, you know, about 45 minutes to an hour or so to, to recap it. We'll take your comments and super chats and all that good stuff. Uh, but here are the five things that Tim says he's looking forward uh, or, or just kind of keeping an eye on the most. So number one, Tim, the underclassmen QB battle here you want to talk about, Minchie and Carr. Yeah. I mean, obviously we don't have Riley Leonard to watch. You know, and Jelly, I, I was I was waiting for the text from Mike. Why not in Jelly? Mike, he's our, he, he's a vet, man. He's he's played in two of these, right? We've seen him in live action in two spring games. So we're good with Steve. We you know, we just saw him in a bowl game. Let's go watch the the fun new toys, so to speak. Is uh, that's all seems like Notre Dame fans are always worried. We, you know, we always like the backups more than who's starting, it seems like. But uh in this case, it's Minchie, you know. He didn't get a lot of reps last year coming off the shoulder surgery, getting healthy, all that good stuff. How's he looking? And then obviously the, you know, the taste of the town has been CJ Carr. I mean, you just, you just flip on anything and it's CJ Carr, CJ Carr, you know, heck the national media was talking about him this week. So uh, starting to go from there. And uh, it's just exciting to see how these two guys are because what's going to happen in 2020. <laughs> The insane conversations that were going to take place. Does someone transfer Mike? I I don't know how four are going to stay on this roster in August. I just I don't I don't because you got Riley, you got CJ, the staff's in love with. Who's those two in the middle? What happens? So I'm I'm just excited to watch a couple new quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Whether like Steve lights it up or stinks it up. I feel like it, what, what what you believe about Steve Angeli, it nothing's going to change your mind. But Minchie and Carr, there's a lot of people out there who are like, you know, maybe I wasn't so sold on Minchie, but now I hear Goolsby's loving him up. So, you know, like I, I'm very intrigued. You know, like I think there's – we're very impressionable at this point on Minchie and Carr, I think, um, is, is is the way to tackle that. So, yeah, uh, nothing number – Steve and just really yeah, nothing against Steve. We've seen him play. We've seen him play in the spring games. Heck, Mike, he was the cover of Blue and Gold two years ago. So we've seen Steve. I wonder how he got on there. Uh, <laughs> number two, Keith, uh, for Tim, offensive tackle fundamentals. Now this is this is Coach Hyde coming out. Tell us what you're looking for. Yeah, just how those two guys. You know, it's the question that the, uh, Andrew earlier talking about Baker and even Charles. Just you know how you know how do they look? It's not going to be overanalyzing but obviously i'll watch it a bunch the spring game probably too much and uh it's just watching them how do they move how do they look the confidence they're playing with all those things we keep hearing so much about you know 11 personnel 11 personnel when you watch mike, mike denbrock is really a tight end flex you're going to see more four wides more trips with the tight end which is going to put those two tackles on an island and i'm just really looking forward to watching those two guys and obviously uh Wagner and Absher. I mean, I love the way you know, I'm really excited about Absher. It's really those four, seeing how they move, seeing how they uh, block, move their hands and feet, and just starting to get your mind right for a college station, what's going to take place that night. Okay, key number three here, 2023 and 2024 defensive class, uh, defensive line classes for Notre Dame. Tim's just pleading with you. Please come alive here. Mike, Mike, check this yes. out. Yes, yes, please come alive. I wrote this down as I was trying to figure out what to talk about. N next year, next year, Mike, you got Oban's gone, Botello's gone, Mills is gone, Cross is gone. Is Anya and Ro Rubio, are they guaranteed to come back for a fifth year? We have no clue in this day and age. Ford could be in the transfer portal. Gabira. So you got Ford and Gabira from the 22 class. Mike, eight bodies. Tim. Eight bodies, Mike. Tim. Tim. <laughs> We need to worry about this seat. We are still so – we have so much time no, for this worried. season. I'm just talking and about you're already looking ahead to 2025 like, damn, Tim. Damn, damn. Like, what if – I wonder if I were Tim Hyde for a day, my head would be spinning. It's like I'm trying to work, and all I can think about is the 2029, you know, backup long snapper. You are – you you need to be studied, Tim. You are You are incredible. You well, you hey. care and you are into this. 
so much. It's it's incredible. Hey, but that's I'm thinking it's always recruiting the bodies, who's who. Obviously, this defense is loaded. They're stacked up the middle. I mean, seriously, you're the old pitch, you know, the old baseball metaphor when you're great up the middle. Notre Dame's got an All-American, right, at safety. They got Jack Kaiser, one of the top ranked linebackers coming back in the country, and two NFL tack. We got two guys that could get drafted next weekend playing for Notre Dame this year. So they're strong as hell up front. But it goes back to these D-line classes. When are they, I want to scream into the microphone. When are they going to rise up and start making some noise? So in the spring game, I don't care about Jeremiah Love going 75. Cool. Uh, we're, we're expecting those things. I want to see these young D linemen and see it and see how they do. So, and they're all on campus playing outside of the couple guys that are injured right now. So we're going to see a lot of them on Saturday. Key number four, Tim. Or question. This is like more of a question. Who wins the one v one matchups on the outside? So, uh, like. I, I I I like where your head's at with the what you're looking for in the spring game. Like, how how do the tackles look? How do the DNs look? Battles, right? And then on the outside, receivers versus corners. Battles. Who steps up? Uh, some things we're uh, keeping an eye on. That goes back to the the Notre Dame wide receiver position. Obviously, there's guys that aren't going to be in the spring game. You know, we got you know Harrison. You know, the transfer injured Thomas with another hamstring injury it's like just rip the thing out buddy yeah can you play without a hamstring you know we should get some scientists and see about that because that guy his hamstring is not doing good collins isn't here Faison's throwing lacrosse balls all over the country so you know they're missing some guys but what's the con i want to see chris chris mitchell all we've heard is four three i want to see him versus gray versus mickey versus all these guys and uh just perimeter speed once again it's about matchups who's looking good outside and just having some fun golden play so much man let's see gilbert cam williams all these guys you know kk smith are going to play in this game great house is a stud i hope he plays two snaps and just drinks water yeah. we, we we need you in this season all right so, so yeah, going a fun with that about my little rant a, a second ago was really a rant. Greg says a coach is always thinks about that. Tim, listen, I get if Marcus Streaming is Tim is our residence coach at Blue and Gold. Tim does not need to be worrying about that. That's my point. Tim like needs Tim needs to be studied because I it, it's tremendous, Tim. Okay. Uh number five here, the new era at linebacker. So you got Kaiser who's been around there. Uh, you know, I think he was on the you know the 88 team. Um, but otherwise, you got some young bucks here. Let me take 30 seconds real quick to say thank you to J.D. and Maris Leofel, J.D. Bertrand and Maris Leofel. Mike, next week, I went, but once again, Tim Hyde, he's going, he's going back in time, Mike, right? I think about too many things. Mike, there's only been six inside, inside linebackers, six inside linebackers drafted since Lou Holtz left. That's it. That's it. Not a lot of bodies. I'm talking Courtney Harrison, you know, Harris, uh, uh, Tyro Harrison, Manti Teo, Watson, Anthony Denham, you know, a couple of guys that Goolsby knows about. And then you got Tr uh, Tranquil and Jalen Smith. That's it. So you got two guys that could easily be drafted next week, which is awesome. But you've been covering recruiting, the hype on these guys. They have got, they have loaded up with young dogs and just excited to see some new, excited to see some new faces out there. And uh, watch these guys run around. Can't wait to watch Kingston. And uh, obviously Bowen, Osbury, Zinner, uh, Jalen Sneed coming alive. So it's an exciting time for Notre Dame and some of these backers.